Hello everyone. In uh, today's video, I will uh, uh, also incorporate uh, the data entities or DMF data management framework, which is available in DGIS 5 uh, for data migration as well as for data integration. And uh, definitely data migration is uh, uh, when you move uh, data from one uh, system to uh, uh, DGIS 5 or D from DGIS 5 to the other system. And integration is definitely a recurring uh, uh, pattern in which you either uh, consume the data or uh, uh, you pull the data, push or pull the data. So, uh, DMF data management framework offers data entities and data entities are just denormalized form of various tables behind uh, D3 spy. So, data entities are more simpler uh, way. Uh, to uh, basically integrate the data or flow the data from one system to another system. So, in this uh, video, we will cover bring your own database uh, concept, which is a very good concept. I have also covered it in my previous uh, video. Uh, you can uh, uh, watch that video as well on uh, the technical playlist of my uh, channel as well. And in this one, I will uh, also uh, show a variation or bring your own database when you need to uh, basically fetch the data from D3 5 and uh, write it to uh, to another external uh, DB for example SQL server or any other uh, target system uh, or destination system. So, what we need to do is basically for uh, bring your own database first of all you need to ensure that whatever entity you want to basically uh, pull from D3 is 5 need to be available within D3 is 5 because once you are using uh, for example if if it is a production definitely on cloud Microsoft is taking care for it but if it is on-prem system or if you are working on one box system so you need to ensure that all the entities after service updates those entities are available and service updates are basically whenever the new updates are available from Microsoft you need to apply uh, those service updates on uh, the instance on which you are working. So, I will uh, just uh, show you, uh, this is basically data management uh, workspace and if you move here in the list, you can find workspaces and then uh, there is data management workspace here. So, you just need to click it. So, it will uh, it will just open uh, this uh, interface where you can find all data management uh, job history data projects and uh, there are various uh, you know functions which you can perform here so you need to just ensure that all the data entities are available and uh, that you can uh, go to data entities but if you can find that uh, various data entities or on which you want to work is not available so, then you can uh, go to data entities and uh, uh, see here, uh, if it is not available, then you can refresh the data entities in order to, uh, in order to uh, those entities to be available in the system. So, for that uh, refresh of data entities, you can go to framework parameters and in framework parameters, you can go to entity settings and refresh the entity list. So, this will ensure that uh, uh, all the entities are available. Even if you delete some entity uh, somehow in order to, for example, if you want to disable the chain tracking or you want to refresh it as uh, out of the box uh, with out of the box settings, then also once you delete that entity, you can refresh the entity list and that entity will again be available. So, that is also the option which you will, uh, uh, you can avail from this uh, functionality. Also, bring your own database sections. In, in this section, you can also see there are certain settings like SQL command timeout, send timeout and other settings are also available if you want to enable all company export. So, uh, after briefing about this one, I will uh, show you on which entity I need to demonstrate this uh, video. And you can go here and you can find these are all entities available alphabetically and uh, there are staging tables also available and uh, then uh, target entity uh, is also mentioned here and chain tracking if it is uh, enabled so that will show but here it is on uh, out of the box settings which are none so i need to just uh, uh, target here the project entity 
So, there are two uh, basically entities covering the projects. So, here you can uh, use this projects entities which will uh, uh, work. So, uh, this is the entity which will cover the project management and accounting. And uh, uh, you know there are uh, various uh, projects within uh, project management and accounting module. So those uh, uh, and all the related details will be available within this uh, entity. So I will be targeting this uh, projects entity. So before that, I need to define uh, basically uh, bring your own database uh, settings uh, parameter settings. For that, I need to go to configure entity export uh, to database. And also, we will be working on uh, uh, export function and we will be defining a project definitely. Uh, so, I will just start with going to configure entity export to database. So, here I will click a new option and in the source name, I can uh, define uh, for example, D365 uh, FO bring your own database. Okay, normally uh, you can see here the type is Azure SQL DB, uh, but somehow uh, by manipulating you can uh, use, for example, in my previous video I have shown that how I have uh, basically uh, mapped a public IP to a subdomain name and created a, a connection string uh, with a fully qualified name because that will be necessary in the connection string. So, I will just show you here. Uh, what are the formats? Uh, you can see uh, this is the structure in which you need to build the connection string. Uh, it need to have a data source that can be a logical server name and this logical server name need to be in this format uh, that can be uh, with just like a domain name. So, uh, normally uh, bring your own database or Azure uh, SQL DB will have uh, this and that you can uh, embed here. But uh, through, uh, for example, uh, you can uh, map uh, uh, subdomain, uh, subdomain to a public IP and then you can also uh, place that one or for uh, on-prem setup, you can uh, give, for example, machine name and the domain name <laughs> that will uh, cover the fully qualified name and that can be also used here. So, uh, then a port number would be mentioned with the comma and then initial catalog means a DB name here. And integrated security means Windows security will be false and user ID uh, and password will be provided. So, this will be the format. So, I will just uh, before that I will just create a DB and uh, with the user name. So, uh, I will just create a new uh, user here. That will be SQL based user bring your own database and uh, I will give it a password and uh, un uh, uncheck the enforce password policy. Uh, okay and uh, that's it. Click OK and also create a DB here. I will create with bring your own database name. Okay DB is created. There are no tables so far and then uh, the user which you have created, you need to just authorize the user to access the DB. So, you can go to the user mapping and go to bring your own, click the bring your own database and then also give it uh, write for example, data reader, writer and admin. Also, uh, if you want, you can give uh, the owner uh, rule that will also suffice. Okay. So, now after creating the DB, uh, you can see there are no tables. So, we need to enable the entities which we need to basically uh, export to the uh, bring your own database table. So, before that uh, we need to build the connection string and connection string need to be in this format. So, I have uh, embedded the machine name which is this uh, one box machine name and uh, port name and the DB, uh, DB name bring your own database and uh, user ID and password I have created. So, I will just copy paste this connection string. Okay, once I have put it here, then I can uh, also select these parameter like enable triggers in target database. This is needed once the uh, database sync operation has been performed, then the triggers might uh, perform the extra work which you need to perform after this. So, for now, I am not enabling this. I will just uh, 
after putting the connection string i just need to validate in order to make it uh, successful okay so now it is saying the test completed successfully so current uh, bring your own database tier is not applicable so now it has uh, basically uh, in uh, validated the connection string now i need to go to the publish in the publish you will find all the entities here so what are these basically so once you have defined the settings you need to basically create the schema for whatever entity you need on your database so right now there are no uh, tables but uh, for example we are now targeting projects uh, entity so i will just select the projects or filter it okay so this is the projects uh, entity and the publish setting is saying no it means this entity has not yet been published to my db which is bring your own database although the connection string was successful so now what we, i need to do is i need to just go to the uh, publish setting okay so publish job has been scheduled uh, successfully so it is saying that entity has been correctly uh, successfully published so i just need to refresh it and it will show me project uh, staging uh, table along with all the fields which were uh, part of the entity in denormalized form so the table has been created on the uh, db which we have set in the connection string and if you uh, refresh it so it will show you published as yes so what else we need to do is we need to basically enable also the chain tracking why it is needed basically so uh, for example once you are integrating an entity and you want all the changes to be published uh, for example so first time maybe a full load or full uh, records will be synchronized but what if if the next time some uh, new projects are added or uh, if the previous projects have been changed so for that chain tracking need to be enabled and once that uh, chain tracking is enabled so the system will take care to synchronize uh, the changes to the existing projects and if there are new projects so those will also be inserted so only the delta will be there so i will just go to the chain tracking and there are two options here even there is third option also but i will discuss here like for example enable primary table and enable entire entity so what is difference basically these are defining the trigger point on which the uh, entity need to be synchronized so if there is any change to the entity i mean to the in, any of the fields which are involved in that entity and for ent uh, by entity uh, it means there are there can be various tables behind this because this is a denormalized form so if there is any change to the field so should it synchronize at that moment or only when there is a primary table for example the project table can be a prim primary table so if there is some change to the primary table and then it should trigger to uh, synchronize with the target uh, system so uh, we will here choose enable entire entity so if there are changes to any of the fields so those need to be synchronized so now you can see here uh, change tracking in the chain tracking instead of none all tables are shown and uh, track delete has become true so these two settings uh, we have done first is published yes and then chain tracking we have enabled it so what is the next step we will just uh, close this uh, uh, screen okay now what we need to do is we need to define an export uh, project we can go to the export and here we need to define a group name here so what we can do is bring your own database export and uh, we can put here a project but if you are targeting uh, more entities so no need to put a project here uh, but i will put here project because this will be revolving around project management and accounting module so if uh, uh, you have uh, uh, even the tables or entities uh, related with other modules so no need to put the project just put any of the name suitable for your requirement and you can uh, briefly describe your uh, uh, project here 
for example, synchronizes the entities related to projects. Okay, so data project operation type here will be export and the project category can be for example, integration. Okay, and then what we need to do is we can uh, select the entities which we need to uh, basically execute. And here we can choose the entity name. Okay, so we will select the projects. Okay, target data format. Now, here we can see the list of various formats. So, we have just defined this. This is five finance and operation bring your own database. So, I will select this one. And then it is saying that default refresh type will be incremental push only or full push only. So, I will choose incremental push only. Even if you select this one, for the first time it will uh, uh, refresh all the uh, records uh, and select uh, fields. So, all fields are selected here. Okay, so we can just uh, press add button here and it will enlist the entity at the bottom uh, grid. And then uh, you can definitely uh, pull up uh, more entities and uh, uh, the sequence also can be defined at the bottom. So, it is showing me if this is the first time an export will be done for entity projects after chain tracking was enabled, then the first incremental export will be a full export. It is recommended not to have any data in the target <laughs> tables. So, basically it is saying that these are staging tables on which this will be synchronized. So, we should not base our uh, you know external system on the staging table, rather we should move anything from that staging table to the final table uh, or external uh, systems table. So, here you can see uh, there are uh, sequencing uh, steps also defined here, which we can use if there are multiple entities. So, which one will be executed first? For example, if there are headers and then there are lines. So, headers should be uh, exported first and then lines should be exported definitely. So, these sequences uh, can also be used here. So, this is it and uh, we have uh, successfully defined the entity in uh, the project and now there are two options. We can uh, uh, put this in a batch and then we can also schedule a uh, batch job so that it, it should be a recurring uh, recurring data job and it will uh, be performed on a certain interval and if we want to export it now, we can uh, do it uh, so. So, I will just uh, press export now and then it will be shown in a job execution screen and uh, remember please that services uh, which are uh, basically involved here like uh, this data import export framework service should be running and if you are running it in a batch, so this batch service should also be running. So, now you can see the execution uh, uh, was successful without uh, any error and uh, how many rows 195 rows were uh, basically exported and we can also see it in uh, the staging table here. You can see here all the fields have been uh, exported. So, there are 195 rows here uh, you can see at the bottom. So, now what if, if for example, I go to the project management accounting module and I define another uh, uh, project here. So, what will happen uh, next time? For example, this job is uh, uh, scheduled in batch. So, what will happen next time? Okay, so I will just create a new project here. So, this will be time material project and a project name, for example, I can put the renovation to uh, building. Admin, admin building and I will uh, pick any of the contracts. Okay, so now uh, I will create the project. So, project ID is 236, 236 is the new project ID. Okay, so the project is defined. I will just close this 236 project and again go to the data management uh, workspace. Okay, so 
here you can see the, the project which we have already created. We can just click on the project and here we can again uh, run export now. You can see here uh, the rows exported are now 1 and uh, execution status was succeeded. And you can now see uh, there are 195 rows. So, I will execute again and it is showing now 196 rows in total. So, it means this was uh, uh, this was com uh, completely successfully uh, basically uh, synchronize the data from a project entity uh, to the external uh, the DB which we have uh, basically integrated. And now uh, definitely we will not be basing any of the external system on this staging table and through uh, maybe uh, integration services, SQL ser uh, integration services, we might be uh, moving this as a source to the destination system. So, this is one of the way where we can also pick the pick and choose whatever the columns are uh, needed here and uh, then moving to that one. Also, we need to take care that what, what are the basically rec recurring schedules. So, for example, if uh, this is scheduled at 2 p.m., uh, 2 p.m. daily uh, to run or maybe hourly if there is a hourly schedule. So, the next job that is integration services job should run after that and that need to take care about the maximum execution time based upon the table volume or uh, volume of the rows. For example, if it is a transactional table, so might be for example, retail transactions uh, table, they are having thousands of uh, records. So, that need to take care about maximum execution time and then the next integration uh, services job should run. So, that need to be taken care. So, that is it for now. I hope you must have enjoyed it and uh, let me know if you have uh, queries. Uh, I think this was straightforward and uh, the only thing is once you are defining your connection string, please take care about this first one because this need to be uh, just like a domain name. So, uh, that in, in the in this format. So, if it is on-prem D3 5 uh, implementation, so you can uh, uh, put the machine name and then a domain name uh, with the dot sign. Uh, with dot symbol or uh, or in in one box case so machine name is only suffice so based upon your uh, scenario you can uh, put this connection string and uh, basically bring your own database is not only used for analytical purposes like for power bi but it can also be used for uh, example uh, flow of data if you want uh, some data from d 5 to any of uh, external third party system so, there are various uses of bring your own database uh, because you need to have the access to those uh, data, but Microsoft is keeping uh, in view the security also. So, that is why uh, to have uh, the access it need to be a secure uh, way as well. So, thank you very much guys. Take care and uh, bye bye.